Hey guys, Dudes Corning here. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to solve 6x6. Now real quick, I just want to say that you do need to know how to solve 5x5, 4x4, and 3x3 before you can learn how to solve 6x6. Um, and if you have a lot of experience with 5x5, then this is the tutorial for you. And when I mean a lot of experience, I'm not talking about advanced methods, just that you know how to solve 5x5 completely on your own, like you don't need a tutorial, um, and that you've learned like one or two things on your own. Um, just kind of have an idea of already knowing how to solve 5x5 five five because 6x6 six six is quite a level up from 5x5. Five five. Alright, so let's go ahead and start off by scrambling the cube because you can't solve a already solved cube. Okay, now that the cube is completely solved, we are going to start off by solving for white again, as I'm sure you already know. Um, and one other thing, I kind of forgot to mention this. If you don't know how to solve 5x5, 4x4, 3x3, then I do have links to those tutorials down in the description. Kind of forgot to mention that, so just to let you know. This is going to work very similar to 4x4 and 5x5, like it's a mix kind of, um, because there is no main centers. So to start off, we have to build a center for white. So then that's going to require our four pieces. So we have one already, and we're going to build it the exact same way we would 4x4. So this should be um, something that you should already know. If you don't, just a reminder, links to that down in the description tutorial for my 4x4. So as you can see, just like that, you can finish your um, square. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to build a two block here. So this is going to require two edge pieces. We already have one here, so we'll use this. And we need another one. Uh, and we have this one here. So we'll just bring it over, and then we can pair it up. And we can just go ahead and insert it. Now we have that in. Now you're going to make two blocks of three here and here. And we already have these two here, so we can just bring this corner into there, just like that. And then we can bring this up, and now we have a three by three block. Now we need to do our other block here. And let's see. So we have this edge here and this one here, and we can use both those. So we got to get this one out, and then we got to get this one out. And then now from here, we just need to pair them. And then we just need to get a corner piece. And there you go. Now you have your three. And then we're just going to go ahead and insert it onto the top. Now the last thing we need to do is to get our four block long I don't know what you call it, line, I guess. Um, and we have all these pieces right here. So we can just go ahead and pair them up and then insert into the top. Now, if that was fast, just a reminder, you do need to know how to solve 4x4 and 5x5 for this to really make any sense. I'm just showing you the main basic steps for block building. Um, I'm not going really in detail how all this is done, just for mainly saving time, because this would be a very long tutorial, and I already have tutorials for explaining how this is done. So check those out to uh, understand. The next thing we have to do is do yellow, and we have to do our center. And we already have our first two here, so we can just go ahead and rotate those up, bring them out of the way, rotate this back down. Now we can do our next one, and it requires this piece here. There it is, so we can slice it in. And then to remember to bring this up, you have to slice out the other yellow pair, rotate this out of the way, and then bring this back down. And as you can see, it is in. Now also, I notice um, this is when learning a bit more on 5x5, having a lot of practice, that this will come very helpful for knowing. Because as you can see, we already have one double pair here and another one here. But also, if you notice, we have two corners already done here and here. Our next step would be to make a three block, and we already have two here, and we already technically have these two 
double blocks here. So we can take one of these out and replace it as our th as one of our pairs already. See, this is when really, like I said, knowing five by five a lot, this can come very helpful. So let's go ahead and take this out and then replace it up into here. And then there you go. You have your first one in and now we just need to get the second one. And let's go ahead and build it. So we just need this edge one piece in for here. It's back here. Slice in and then bring it up. There we go. And then last thing we need is our pair on the to go into here. So there that's in and then there's this one here. And then we just rotate that up and there you go. Your first two centers are done. Now that you know how to do your first two centers, it should be this. It, it's going to be the exact same for blue and red, which are the next two. Um, so remember your center placements. You can see my four by four tutorial on that, or you can just look at a regular Rubik's cubes and remember which colors go where. Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump on to green and orange next, only because this is going to save a lot more time. So let's go ahead and just jump into that. Okay, now that you have your other centers built and you just have the last two, this is going to be very, very similar to 5x5, five five, um, how you're just going to slowly work your way for building it. Also, this does require commutators, um, and commutators I do explain in my last video that I just posted. Link in the description, uh, card up there, uh, also you can click on. Um, so just letting you know because this there's really no other way you can build your last two centers with, on 6x6 without knowing commutators. So the first thing we want to do is build our center as normal, and we have that piece right here. Okay, rotate out of the way. And then we have these two here we can just bring down, rotate out of the way, bring back up. Okay, so we have this bar already here, and then we have our three here. Bring this down, rotate out of the way, bring back up. And we can build our next pair using this corner and these two here. Bring that up, rotate back, and there we go. Now time for commutators. So as you can see, we have these three left and these three left. Now, if you remember in the video, like I explained, what you're doing is you're replacing a different piece in for this slot. So you line them up underneath. So we're going to do this edge here, lining up underneath. You're going to bring this down, rotate the front. That way it's out of the way. And we're going to bring this side down into here to replace it, just like that. Turn the front back to bring this up. And then we're going to rebring this back up into here. Once again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go check out that other video. Sorry, I hate to be that person to have to make a different video for you to understand, but believe me, it does require another video. Okay, and then next we have this edge here and here, and they're lined up underneath. Bring it down, turn the front back, bring this side down into here. Turn the front back again, bring this side up. And then, of course, bring that up. Now left, all we have is these corners. Now, I could do a commutator on this again, but I'm actually going to do what we did in the 5x5 five five tutorial, and that is by turning the, doing our small algorithm, which is turning the two right side layers up. This can be considered RR or R wide. Um, and then turning, turning the top and then bring this side back down. And then all you do is you just solve this case here, just like that. And now moving on to edge pairing. Edge pairing is going to seem very, very long, um, and there's really no way around it. I'm just gonna use the beginner's version of this. I know lots of you guys know the advanced ones, but just for all those new people here, I'm gonna just do the beginners. Um, and so I noticed that we have this one here, these two already here. So we'll just go ahead and line them up. We would slice, bring down a different edge pair, and then slice back. Then we will find the next piece, which is this one here. And it's not orientated correctly, so I'm going to fix that. 
slice and then just bring down a broken pair and then slice back just like that. Now then we have these two here and we can find our next two edges pieces. So we have one here. We're gonna line it up where it needs to go. Slice it in, bring down a different broken pair and slice back. And we just need to find the last piece which is right back here. So line it up underneath, slice it in, and then bring in a different pair and then slice back. Now I'm not going to keep doing this just for a matter of saving time. Um, and just a reminder, I explain a lot of this in my five by five tutorial. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go on to last four edges. So let's go ahead and skip to that. Okay, so now we have last four edges and they're all across the middle layer here. I just put them there that way it would be easier for you guys to already know where I'm at. And how this is actually going to work is it's going to be very, very similar to five by five edges. So I'll show you a five by five here. A five by five has a center edge and then two outer edges. And what we're gonna basically be doing is we're gonna be building our center edge and then just solving how we would for five by five edges. So this is going to work very, very similar. So we have these two here and here, so we can flip this one around. And of course we have none on top and bottom for replacing, so I need to put one back up here for our replacement. Slice it into here, bring this edge down like that, and then slice back. So we have our first center edge built, and then we're gonna do the same with these two pieces here and here. Okay, and our extra pair is up here. So we slice, bring this side down like this. And then there we go. Okay, now when you have just the last two edges, so like this and this, and you have to build the last two center edges on these edges, um, this is going to work the same way it would on four by four. And it's when you just have these two and these two, and you're gonna use the exact same algorithm. So you slice, and it's gonna be R, F prime, U, R prime, F, and then slice back. And there you go. Now you have all the center edges built on your last four edges, and then you're just going to solve the last four edges how you would with five by five. So you would bring this one over to here. As you can see, we could slice it. And then we would just bring this one down into here and then slice back. Now we also have this one and this one, so we can flip this one around. And our broken pair is up here. So we can slice, bring it down into here, and then slice back. Now when dealing with last two edges, um, this is gonna work the same way as five by five, so there's really not much for me to talk about. I do have last last two edges on five by five down in the description that I made a tutorial for, so that can always help you for this specific these specific cases. So let's go ahead and solve for this one, and we're gonna need to flip this edge pair around because we need to be knocking the edge piece out. So we would do that. And then we would slice, perform the flipping edge algorithm and then slice back and then we would have parity here and of course parity is really long so I'll just quickly go through it and it would look like this and then there you go and then from here you would just solve like regular three by three from only turning the outer edges. So, and of course there is parity, so I'll quickly go through having that. Okay, so here we have the edge flip parity, and this works the exact same on four by four, except you're turning the, the two layers. And um, I'll list the four by four algorithm up there, except the algorithm is really referring to when I'm saying uh, turning the lower case, I'm really referring to these two layers at once. So it look like this. And 
And there you go, now the edge is flipped. And then of course for the last other parity, which is the same as 4x4, it would work the exact same way, how you would turn the top, technically three layers, although um, for 4x4 it's two, so it's just gonna work the same way. So it's like this. And there you go, the cube is solved. And that is how you solve six by six. I know this is kind of a quick yet long, interesting kind of tutorial, because it does require lots of other tutorials. Um, sorry about that. Uh, there's really just no other simple way for solving this. But anyway, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please remember to hit that like button down below. And if this video, and if you want to see more future tutorials or unboxings or anything along those lines for Rubik's Cubes, feel free to hit the subscribe button as well as those bell notifications to be notified when upcoming videos are released. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.